Well, I had only met Everson Walls a couple times, but I was told you ask him a question, he's going to give you a real answer. And never was that more true than our recent conversation, which covers several topics, but it can be broken down into before, during, and post career. Everson Walls could always imagine himself as a Dallas Cowboy. After all, that was his hometown team, growing up just blocks from the practice field. On Forest Lane and Abrams, that's where the, the first Cowboy facility was. And so that's right down the street from my neighborhood, an historic neighborhood called Hamilton Park that was uh, consistent of amazing people. Since I went to juvenile in, in, at 14 years old, there was always somebody to help me. Uh, pull through it to where I thought, you know, I mean, at 14 years old, you're a juvenile, you're thinking that's the end of the world. You know, my life is over. But boom, there it is. Somebody as, as overly dramatic as that could be, uh, someone was there to pull me up. Being in a juvenile detention center in many ways shaped the person Everson would become. That's a hard lesson to learn at 14 years old. It made me understand that my, my direction in life was not that direction. I am not made for jail. I'm not made for juvenile. My life is better spent outside of prison. And so uh, I realized that if I was going to do anything in life, it was not going to be anything that's going to take me down that path. Instead, Everson's path took him to Richardson Berkner and being a walk-on at Grambling State, who eventually got a full ride. Despite being a 1AA All-American, undrafted in 1981, but signed with his hometown Dallas Cowboys. He became a starter five games into his rookie season, led the NFL with 11 interceptions, and received the trip to the Pro Bowl. There was a lot of anger in my uh, football years. It wasn't just not being picked. It was why I wasn't picked. I felt like I wasn't picked because I went to Grambling State. You know, all of those things. So. I want them to see that this is a brother from Hamilton Park, you know, who, who at every turn uh, defied the odds. With the Cowboys, Walls made the Pro Bowl four times and led the team in interceptions five times. But cut by Dallas after the 1989 season, he signed with Bill Parcells and the Giants in 1990, helping the Giants win their second ever Super Bowl title. When the Cowboys got rid of me, they thought they would, they'd never hear from me again. What you want to look at? You want to look at numbers or you want to look at Super Bowl winners? I got that. I went to a team. I didn't just sit on the bench and come in on third down. No, I came in and balled out. I took the starting job. I led that team and I did what I told Parcells I would do. I helped him win the Super Bowl, just like I told him I would do. There were so many people that would think that, you know what, I'd rather lose without him than win with him. Well, I, I hope a lot of those people eat those words because some of you did. The fire he had in his belly on the field can never compare to the compassion he's always had inside his heart. Everson Walls will always be known for donating a kidney to his former Cowboys teammate and best friend, Ron Springs, in 2007. You don't hear many situations about friends donating organs to friends, yes. and it's not a blood relationship. True. That's what struck me. Our wives were friends immediately on a, at a totally different venue. You know, they're somewhere else meeting each other and they hit it off. So really, you know, uh, Ron and I were just a victim of, you know, we couldn't get away from each other if we wanted to because eventually the wives were gonna bring us around each other all the time. So he was family, their family. Once again, it was my selfishness. Uh, you don't have that many good friends like that. If I would have sat around totally healthy and I try my best to stay healthy and watch my friend, supposed to be my, one of my best friends, uh, go through something like that. I could never look at his wife in the eye again and not say I did all I could. And of course, it's not like I gave my life for it. You know, I gave a part of me. And while it was a monumental loss for Everson with Springs passing away in 2011, now, Walls is giving all of himself to young people who have hopes and dreams as he once did through his nonprofit, which he co-founded, Ethos Education. My business partner, Mike Davis, has this dogged determination to try and save every child he can, whether it's in uh, elementary school, all the way up to high school. We want to make sure that they understand that well, how you might look at yourself right now may not be the way other people look at you. 
And it may not matter to you. It shouldn't matter to you how they look at you as long as you carry yourself in the right fashion. So no matter what your background, no matter how many parents you grew up with, no matter if you're living with your grandmother, I don't care what neighborhood you come from. It's all about how you carry yourself and what opportunities are afforded to you. We partner with other corporations who are our sponsors. They sponsor these kids and they also give them internships. So we try and give them an avenue uh, of, for success and, and try and take away as many excuses as possible. And who better to serve as an example of letting nothing stop you from getting to where you want to be than Everson Walls. Keith Russell, CBS 11 Sports.